Hi and welcome to the Zen Superman podcast. The episode today is about bullying. If you used to be a victim of bullying at school and now you want to make sure that the same thing doesn't happen to your kids, you want to be sure that you help them grow up being resilient, resistant, not become a victim of any bully or even later on in life, no victim of any kind of toxic relationship, then you need to listen to this episode. Let's go. Hi, I'm Elena and I'm a mommy tantrum specialist because I used to be specialist at yelling at my daughter daily. Now, six years fast forward, me and my team help busy, loving moms stop yelling, start setting healthy boundaries with natural consequences while staying calm so that the kids listen more. And one day when you look back at their childhood pictures, you will be able to feel at peace and happy with what a wonderful job you did. So that's what we do in this Zen Superman podcast, helping you find out why none of these parenting techniques, not even anger therapy and counseling is ever going to help you get there. You need to understand the root. Where is all of your uncontrollable anger coming from? That's what this podcast is about. So welcome to the Zen Superman podcast. Hi, I'm Elena. I'm the mommy tantrum specialist and the founder of the Zen Supermom, where we help busy moms and dads who are super loving and with super good intentions. They <laughs> just don't know how to make their kids listen without yelling. So then they end up actually being the first bully of their children, which is what I realized I used to do with my daughter. So let's talk about it. Let's take a deep breath. <sighs> let's talk about it. How do we protect our kids from bullies? Because yes, it starts at home. Yes, it does. And I see this, this again, the inspiration for this podcast episode, as always, it's coming from all the women who come and ask for help. So everybody coming from the mommy tantrum training. By the way, if you haven't seen it yet, you should definitely register. Because that's where I explained from the beginning how come your kids are not listening to you, how come you need to start yelling and how come you cannot control that anger from vomiting it out and exploding on your kids, even though like it hurts you, you feel so guilty and ashamed for doing that. So that's what we do in the mommy tantrum training. Now, what I usually hear there from women coming there, when they hear me talk about my story, how painful it was when I realized I used to be my daughter's first bully, that's where I start getting their attention. So my goal is not to make you feel even more guilty than you already are. However, you need to understand this is a pattern that didn't start with your kids. It didn't start with you even. It didn't start all the way back then. There is a reason. There is a reason why parents are not able to control their anger. And it has all to do with them. So just like it was not your parents' fault, whatever they did to you. But I'm now going very fast, okay, by the way. I'm skipping all through all the explanations that you get at the mommy tantrum training. But this is the reason why you became the bully of your children. Because that's what bullies do. That's what I used to do. I used to feel so much out of control. I felt so much pain in not being able to do it all when I became a mom. I had all of these big expectations of myself, of what I should do as a good mom. And then on top of that, not just the mom, not just taking care of my daughter, but doing everything else that I was doing already before, that my life was full already before I became a mom. And the fact that my daughter, I start seeing her as the reason why I cannot have it. And no matter how good I try to be as a mom, how gentle, like all this gentle parenting, attachment parenting, you're reading all the books that are telling you how you should do it different than your parents. And you're like, oh, totally makes sense. I want to do that. But then because our, our childhood was different, our parents didn't teach us how to do it. Then there's this disconnect and there's like, I don't want to yell like my mom, but how the f do I make it happen? Because this book just makes me feel more and more guilty that I can't do that. I know sh I should be doing, I should be the nice and patient, calm mom, but I can't. This pain made me feel like there is something fundamentally wrong with me. I can't make it happen. I can't do it all. And I can't make my daughter 
obey and listen to me without yelling at her because she's not. She was one, two years old and I started already feeling powerless because she had her mindset and she wanted to do her things at her pace. And logically, theoretically, from watching all these parenting stuff, like all reading all these books, I knew she was perfectly normal. (laughs) That's what she was supposed to do. Take her time, play. But then I was like, how do I make it? Like, I need to be getting to places on time. I need to be doing things, not just taking care of her. On top, I had just one child and I felt so much out of control. Like my whole entire life exploded and nothing got done. So I was like, this is not possible. I need to put her in some frame. Things need to be happening. So this pain I was feeling of not being able to do that. I then started projecting on her. I was like, right now I need to get out. You have to stop playing. And so if you cannot be playing, then I'm going to get so angry and it's going to be your fault. And so then you are finally going to feel the pain that I feel. That's what bullies do, right? Only hurt people hurt others. No bully is a happy person. Like everything is going on so well in my life and I'm so happy I woke up in such a great mood today and I just love the world and I love my life. Let me hurt somebody. No. (laughs) Bullies are essentially people who are feeling in so much pain. They feel so much out of control about their own lives. That's why the only thing they can control is giving pain to somebody else. This is Take it or not, like this is my version of like my explanation, psychological explanation of how bullying works, knowing that firsthand, which is how I turned into a bully. And I bullied the person I would give my life for, which is the most like effed up thing in the world, right? Like I (laughs) sacrificed so much to give life to this baby. And then it's me who's hurting her the most. How effed up this is, right? Then, why am I talking to you about this? Because this is then the cycle that continues. Once your kid has been a victim of your own bullying, then what happens is they don't stop loving you. They will stop loving themselves. And they will feel like mommy's right. I'm a bad kid because I make her angry. I make her cry. I ruin it all. I'm not good enough. I'm not fast enough. I will never be. There will always be something wrong with me. Mommy is right. There's something wrong with me. And those are the kids. Then they have low self-esteem, low self-confidence. And they are like mentally, their self-esteem is broken. And there is no amount of psychologists, counselors, not in their childhood, not in their adulthood. Nobody will ever tell them, No, you're not. Nobody will ever be able to cheer them up enough to erase this belief from their nervous system. Okay? Those are the kids that the predators look for. All those sick, toxic people who are then like serious bullies at school, teenagers, first relationships, first loves. They are looking for victims like this. They are looking for people with low self-confidence, low self-esteem, who don't feel they are good enough because they are the easiest victims. They will not put up a fight when they hurt them. They will not tell anybody. They will be easy to be manipulated and frightened and silenced so that the abuse can keep going on. And if you have been, I, I hope not, but I know there will be many of you listening to me who have been a victim of some serious abuse in your life. Because I meet these women, I meet women like you every day, every week. I meet you. I'm talking to women who tell me like, yes, it's not about like, the, I'm yelling at my kids and I'm so angry and I'm in so much pain because I was in a toxic relationship with my ex and it's his fault as well. He's yelling on the kids and yadi da di da da And my job is to show them it did not start there. It's not your abusive ex's fault. Not defending him. Of course he did. Of course, there's like plenty of stuff he did wrong. But that's not where it started for you. Then they tell me, okay, so yeah, I was bullied at school. I was like, yeah, I'm sorry it happened to you. A lot of pain. Sure. And also, it is not the fault of the bullies that bullied you at school. 
and I take them all the way back to their childhood. Who was your first bully at home? Who was the first person in your life who made you feel not respected, who made you feel not heard, not seen, like you didn't matter? Whatever you needed, too bad, suck it up. Because I'm here, I'm the parent, I decide it has to be my way and you just get along. And if you have a problem with it, go to your room because I don't want to see your angry, crying, sad face, whatever. You come back when you're a happy kid who's ready to say yes the first time I ask. That's who your first bully was. Does that make sense? And that's the root of the snowball that went with you as you were growing up. That's why the kids picked up on you in school and you were a victim of school bullying. Because kids can smell it. They tried bullies. They try on everybody. Like, I remember I've there were some nasty, mean girls when I was a kid. I didn't give in. It hurt me, but I was just like, they didn't. They couldn't touch me. I was not that broken. The one who, who bullied me <laughs> after my mom. Sorry, mom, but yes, you were my first bully. Then the second one was my brother because he knew where it hurt me the most. The girls at school, they were making fun of me that I was stupid and stuff. I was like, no, <laughs> it's exactly the opposite. <laughs> That's why you're picking up on me because you're jealous. You're not an A student. And thanks to my hyperachieving and everything, all the pressure from home, at least I was an A plus student. I was the best in the class. So them making fun of me that I was stupid or that I was making stupid comments. I was like, no, <laughs> that's not it. My brother, though, he managed to get under my skin because he was commenting on my looks. And he was commenting how fat I was, how fat legs and fat butt and how ugly face and stupid hair and everything. That got under my skin. That messed me up a good time. That was part of the... The fact why I was picking up relationships then in my like late teens, in my in my early 20s, I was basically in a relationship with anybody who would tell me I'm beautiful. How messed up, right? It was not if they were a good guy, if they deserved like, if, if we had common values. <laughs> like, what are you talking about, teenagers? It was enough for them to tell me that I'm beautiful and that they like me that they like the way I look. And I immediately started paying more attention and I was much more likely to go out on a date. So why am I talking so much about you being a victim of bullying and you bullying your kid? Because then this gives you the idea exactly, right? What, what is it for your kids that needs to happen? What is the best way for you as a mom to make sure your kid is not going to be a victim of any toxic person, not be manipulated, not be abused in any way, and not be a victim of any bullying. How do you do that as a mom? You tell me. That's exactly how much power you have, okay? That's exactly why we're talking. And I know I'm, I feel it. Like I have like this super direct energy because I'm like, ah! I'm fighting here for all the victims of bullying and at the same time i'm mad at myself for being the one who bullied my daughter but this is what you can do once you use that energy once you use that guilt for a good purpose then once you use that guilt as the engine as the fuel to actually go something do go and do something good about it okay because it doesn't help anybody. You sitting here and feeling sorry for yourself and for your kid and crying about it and feeling like, I messed up my kids for life. Well, you did give them some childhood trauma. You did. Okay, let's call it what it is. But as long as you stay in that victim and guilt and the judging yourself, you will not be able to look forward and now go do something about it. So what is it exactly that you can do about it? I think you can already guess what I'm going to say, right? One healed mom is more powerful than a team of psychologists. I said it before several times and I will keep saying that because you need to hear me. I just spoke to another mom this morning who told me her son has been seeing psychologists for six years. I'm like, how is that working for him? It's not. Like, yeah. One healed mom is more powerful than a team. Several psychologists. Why is that? You tell me. 
Because it's not about your kid talking to somebody doing talk therapy and trying to analyze and talk through their pain and them trying to make it go away. What is it that your kid has been missing all along? What is the key thing that they have been asking for that they need? You don't know? Then go think about your childhood. What is it that you needed more than any summer holidays, Christmas gifts, new clothes, What is it that you needed to feel the most from your own parents? So, now you know what your child needs to feel from you. And I know you'll be telling me, but I tell him how great he is, how much I love him and how amazing he is and and how talented and how good enough and how beautiful they are. And I tell them all day long how much I love them. Words are cheap. How do you react when they make a mistake? How do you react when they mess up? When they make you be late? When they are being with the head in the clouds and your time is running out? How do you act then? What kind of energy do you come up to them? Do you still feel like telling them how much you love them? I don't think so. Not in that moment, right? And this is not the invitation to let your kids run your life based on their schedule. Absolutely not. There needs to be some boundaries. There needs to be some negotiation about responsibilities. And they need to be respectful for sure. Gentle parenting doesn't mean like let your kids do whatever they please whenever they want. No. But it starts with you cleaning up pain you have from your childhood because it's like dark glasses full of mud and stuff you cannot see your kids clearly all you see when you look at them is the reflection of your own trauma is the reflection of your own childhood pain you are worried that they will not be accepted by friends that they are not sociable enough nobody will like them and that they will be victims of bullying You are worried about that. That's why you're judging them. That's why you're controlling them. That's why you're pushing them to be perfect because you're worried people will not like them and that's going to hurt them. Well, look what that's doing to them already. They are not getting the love from the one person who who is the most important. If they don't feel loved unconditionally by their own mother, then nothing else matters. No other relationship with anybody or anything will ever feel or feed that void in them. That's why you, by the way, keep overeating, drinking, shopping excessively, like whatever you're doing, binge watching Netflix until you're a complete zombie because you want to forget about the pain you feel inside. And that pain comes from the times when you did not feel good enough, no matter how hard you tried. So, in order to help your kids not feel the same way, not be the victims of any bullying, you need to start healing yourself first. So that when you look at your kids, you see them and not your trauma, not your own pain, not your own insecurities, not your own like, oh, how do I do that because my parents didn't teach me. You need to heal yourself first. No more trauma coping mechanisms, no more controlling, people pleasing, perfecting, hyper achieving, restless, avoiding, judging. Heal. So that then, when your kids need you because their life got tough, they are struggling with something, all they will see when you look at them is the reflection of their potential, of their worthiness. They will not see your trauma and your pain. They will not take that up on themselves. The generational chain of not good enough will stop with you. So that when they look at themselves through your eyes, they will feel the essence. They will understand I'm worthy because my mom loves me no matter what. Yes, I don't always get it right. I'm not perfect. She's helping me. She's sometimes mad at me because I forget to do this or that. But I know there's nothing in the world I could do that she would stop loving me. Because that's the energy you will start giving them, especially when they deserve it the least. Those are the moments. That's why I was saying the cheap, the talk is cheap. 
you telling them how much you love them in the last few seconds before they fall asleep and you know like ah, I have my time and they will sleep now so I can tell you I love you so much and now sleep no they need to hear the most when they are the least worth it when you feel like they messed up a big time because isn't that what you would wish think about it from your perspective think about the last biggest mistake you made which would you prefer that somebody comes and like smashes your face in it and like keeps reminding you for the next one year every day of your life or would you rather that somebody comes and say like "Mm, that didn't work did it so what do we need to learn from it how are you going to fix it do you want my help fixing it and by the way you're amazing not these words but with this energy you will make them feel the more down they are, the more they beat themselves up, the more you will tell them, it's okay, I'm not mad. The energy is like, I love you no matter what. There's nothing in the world that you can do for me to stop loving you ever, ever. I will always be your safe place where you can always come back to, no matter what mistake you make, no matter how in my, how much pain you are, no matter, no matter what, there's nothing you can ever do or say that would make me stop loving you. That's the energy for me from which you need to start living. But you will be able to do that only once you clean up your childhood trauma and when you will, once you will realize that you, the same applied to you once upon a time. You are worthy of being loved unconditionally no matter how much you mess up. You as a mom, it doesn't matter how much you already traumatized your kids, how much you bullied them. What matters is now the present moment, you deciding enough, I'm breaking it now. I'm getting the help and I'm going to start giving my kids what they need, which is what I needed all along. Feeling seen, heard, loved unconditionally, no matter what. We can talk about how to correct the behavior, but the child underneath, the connection with you underneath, the safety and love you they need to feel so that they feel really secure to come back to you whenever they are struggling with anything. That's what needs to be the baseline. Yes. Let's take a breath. I'm feeling quite intense today. (laughs) I I hope you're doing well. If you made it all the way here to to this point in the podcast episode, that tells me, good, well done. You can handle it. There are probably some people who already checked out. (laughs) They were not ready for this kind of level of energy. Not judging them for anything. But it's good. Good on you. You made it. Okay. What's going to happen in the coming hours, you will feel rattled a little bit, probably. You will start examining your behavior. You will start paying more attention. Great. If there's any judge voice in your head who will beat you up, permission granted, send it away. Tell the judge, I'm here to learn from my mistakes. Okay? So let's make sure you learn. But first of all, you will have to send that judge away because as long as you're beating yourself up, you are not learning. You're still in your victim mode and it's about you. That's the egotistic little you, the little child. As long as you stay you being the hurt child in pain, feeling guilty, you cannot be the adult helping your kids. So that's how you perpetuate and prolong the pain for everybody. So the sooner you get out of your guilt mode, And you get into action saying like, I'm making a clean slate. It stops today. Let me get the help I need so that I can change and learn from it and make it better in the future. That's all that counts. So what are the next steps that you can take? Sign up for that mommy tantrum training. That's the best way I know how to help you, right? Because that's where I explain it from the beginning till the end. What are the steps? I'm throwing here a lot of things like childhood trauma and stuff. You need to understand. If you haven't done the digging with me yet or in 10, 20 years of talk therapy, because that's approximately how long it takes them to let you know where it all comes from. You need to know where exactly it comes from. You need to know who was your first bully. What is it that they did to you? And then you need to find a specialist to help you heal it fast. Not in the next 10 years. So you can save your money and time on any classic counseling, talk therapy, EMDR, CBT, uh, hypnotherapy, EFT, family systems. 
But those are the ones that I hear the most often about. You need to work with a specialist at healing generational developmental, because that's what I also explain. It's specific kind of childhood trauma. Okay? That's what needs to happen. Second thing that needs to happen is par- in parallel is you rewiring your brain that automatically goes into all those trauma coping mechanisms like the hyperachieving, perfecting, controlling, people pleasing, avoiding, judge. Those are all trauma coping mechanisms because at one point in time in your life you felt not good enough. So you started I- applying all these compensation strategies to make yourself feel good enough. Okay, there's something wrong with me. But if I only cover it up by being perfectionist, controller, hyperachiever, then other people will give me some approval. At least little breadcrumbs, please. I know I was not worthy of being loved fully by my parents. I'm really so bad. But please, would you give me at least some breadcrumbs of appreciation and love, attention, if I just hyperachieve, control, perfect, uh, do enough? Yeah, so you put that facade, that facade has to go out. You need to rewire your brain so that you don't have to look for these crutches and compensation mechanisms so that you feel like I'm good enough, I'm worthy, and I know how to do it the healthy way. My parents couldn't teach me. I'm not here to blame them. Probably something happened that was even worse in their childhood. I bet they already made it better for me than they had it in their childhood. That's okay. I'm at peace with what happened. I'm here to do it better. And I understand it's not just about learning some parenting scripts to manipulate my kids somehow to do what I need to do because of my trauma, but I'm here to do it the healthy way. Connection first, unconditional love and worthiness, being aware of what are the priorities here, okay? And then, only then, we can start talking about boundaries, respect, kids listening, but you need the baseline first. That's why none of these parenting techniques were working because that's standing on top. You have no foundations. It has nothing to stand on. Your kids are feeling not loved, not heard, not seen. They are in the same childhood trauma that you were. So then whatever parenting sprinkles you try to put on it, it just sinks in that deep mud of pain and generational trauma. That's why you need to fix the foundations first so that whatever parenting technique you learn afterwards, then it's going to work. Okay? Does it make sense? Good. Well done. I'm very intense. I'm going to do some yoga now. <laughs> I This is the like the fighting spirit for all the victims of the... This is why, yes, this is the last point I wanted to mention. Because this, was, this was the last source of inspiration for this podcast episode. It's been cooking in me for a very long time. There are no coincidences, right? And I don't know why, but maybe this is the reason why someone was meant to hear it today. I, in my algorithm of the Czech news servers, like I'm keeping in touch because even though I live abroad, I, I'm still checking the Czech news every day, the news feed. And somehow the news picked up on the fact that I'm always reading the articles about victims, victims of abuse, sexual violence, physical violence. Um, I think the algorithm has seen me and it's tracking me now and it's giving me more and more articles about that. And one thing, that I notice, like the, the common denominator, I'm in no way an expert on like self-defense and, and things. And I, I, I'm just interested in it. And I feel this is the reason why. Because I realize there's a pattern and this is what every specialist and like prevention worker are, that's what I'm seeing as a as a common denominator in all of these articles and all of this awareness they are trying to build. This is the message. The predators will always be out there. They will always be looking for weak, for victims. And they can see it. Even before you say anything, they can see it on your energy. They see it. Who carries themself, themselves? Who has the confidence? They can see it already in body posture. And they pick kids, people who are avoiding eye contact, who are looking down, who are looking like they're hunched down. So low self-confidence, low self-esteem, kind of like the introverted, the energy, I want to disappear. I don't want, I'm not worthy. That's who they pick because those are the easiest. So now probably answering the question you had out the, all the way from the beginning of this podcast episode, how to make sure then then your kids will not become victims of this bullying is, it's really, it goes down to you 
not trashing their self-confidence. No child is born shy. No child, no baby has ever been born like quiet with low self-esteem, low self-confidence. Remember that you're a baby? Like unless there is really, and I don't, I hope that's not your case. There is maybe like certain fragment of a percentage of babies who are born with some like genetical or brain malfunction that they are not like that. But the vast majority of us, we are born as perfectly confident babies because that's the survival mechanism. Have you ever seen baby that was shy to say that they are hungry? Like, no. <laughs> How did your baby let you know that they are hungry, that they are wet, that they are cold, that they miss you? They are very vocal. They don't shy away from asking for whatever need they need, whenever they need. It's just that we couldn't handle it as moms because it was too much for us, right? But it's not the fault of the baby. Babies are born perfectly confident. So then our job as moms is to make sure they do as li- we do as little damage to their confidence as possible. And if the damage was already done, then you need to start by healing yourself so that then you can help your kid heal. And it, there's ne- it's never too late. I just spoke to a mom of a 15-year-old today and I could clearly see once we dove deeper because as a first blank statement, we agreed and she told me even herself before I didn't convince her of anything, but she told me she understands it's never too late. It's never too late to help my son, even though he's already 15. She got it. So I agreed with her on a surface level, for sure, already at the beginning. But then the deeper she went into explaining to me what exactly happened. And then I traced it even to her childhood and relationship with her mom and sister and everything that happened. Then she was like, what? And then I could really explain to her, this is how you... When you heal, you are the key person around which the universe of your child is turning, even when they are 15, still. That's why you matter so much. That's why your healing is key. Okay? This is the best bullying prevention strategy ever. You heal your pain so that you can connect with your child trauma-free. You take off your pain glasses. Once you start loving yourself unconditionally and you know you're worthy, you have always been worthy of being loved exactly the way you are without having to change a thing. Once you know that's true about you, then... You can start teaching. You don't even have to teach. You will model naturally the same attitude, the same energy to your child. And that's the best bullying protection ever. Because then they will go through life. Some bullies might try it on them. And it will just bounce back. I can guarantee to you that no bad things will happen to your kid. It's just like, I can't guarantee the same for you. I can't guarantee the same even for myself and for my daughter. Life will keep throwing stuff. Bad things happen to good people. I don't wish that to anybody. (laughs) Not on me either. But wouldn't it be better to feel like I'm ready? Bring it on, life. (laughs) It's okay. Things might knock me down, but it's not going to change who I am, how I feel about myself. And that's the spirit I want my daughter to grow up with. So that when there's bully passing by, they're not going to pick her up. Because they will see how she carries herself. And she will be able to say a very loud, No, no way, not with me. You better get out of here. Okay? And if some does, something does happen to her that she's not able to prevent or avoid or get away from... I know she will bounce back quickly because she will know it had nothing to do with me. It was just a really messed up hurt guy, girl, whatever, whomever. It was really messed up situation. I need to recover, but it had nothing to do with me. And it's not, I'm not going to make it mean anything to me. Because that's like without, yeah, with taking the risk of going into another caveat. I want you to know this. Trauma is not what happened to you. Trauma is what you make it mean. Trauma is the pain that you felt 
after the event happened because there was nobody who was able to help you process that. So that's how we will never be there as moms. We will not be able to prevent our kids from getting in bad situations. Not always. But by building up their self-confidence, their resilience, their inner knowing about who they are and that there's nothing in the world that can ever change that, that's the best tool you can ever give them to make sure they will be able to bounce back quickly from anything. Does that make sense? And how valuable would that be if you were able to do it for yourself now? That's why I'm here. Yeah. So taking last deep breath, I feel my energy is calming down. I think that's it. That's what I needed to share with you. Yeah. That's why I was still feeling hype and high because there was this last piece that I wanted to share with you. Good. Now I feel complete. I hope you survived it. <laughs> I hope you will let me know afterwards. I always love hearing from you, by the way. I always get a lot of emails from my clients because they already know how to reach me uh, after they listen to some podcast episodes. So <laughs> even if you're not a client yet, if we've never met, I think that wherever you're listening, there is always an email address listed. So go hit the reply and, and share with me what this podcast episode did with you. Hopefully in a good way. It probably stirred up a lot, but I hope you can survive it and you will take the best out of it. And if you don't find, if you can't find anywhere the email address, then just look up Zen Supermom yeah, on all social media. Even Now even in TikTok, I have such an amazing team. They even put me on TikTok. So <laughs> Great. Good. Let me know how it's working for you. Whenever you're ready to take it one step further and not just start thinking about healing, but actually start taking action to heal. And you want to know and we want to check how we could do that for you, me and my team, then reach out. That's why I'm here. Sending you lots of light and love. You're worth it. Huh? If nobody told you ever, <laughs> and if it's too difficult to believe it, then borrow my belief. You are worth everything that you need, everything that you desire, and you have always been worthy. And I see you. I know it's crazy. <laughs> have fun, super mom. I appreciate you. And your kids are lucky to have you, by the way, yeah? because not every parent is courageous enough to do this work. Most of them would blame it and, oh, the teacher could help my kid and da, 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 other people. And why is this such a bad world with so many bully kids at school and da, 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 victim, victim, victim. You're not doing that, huh? So I see you. I appreciate you. Take care. Keep me posted. Bye. Why can't you stop yelling at your kids? And no, it's not the stress, lack of sleep, kids not listening, fighting, hitting, no support, time pressure, ADHD, hormones. No, moms around the world are doing it regardless. How? Join us for the upcoming mommy tantrum training and find out too.